Are you ready? What's up guys? I finally got my motor back for Shahiro. It's probably been, I don't know, about a month now. Um, but we finally got her. So went and picked it up at the at the shop yesterday and it was uh, super stormy, it was downpouring and I was just, man, I was just so tired. We've been working so much lately that um, I just let it sit in the car for the night. But uh, here we are after work today, yay. And uh, there's the nice fresh 20R. It's been shaved all the way across with the timing cover, so it's perfectly flat there. We've got 40 over pistons, which means they're about a millimeter over stock. I just learned that. Nice, perfect bores. See that number two, remember that was the one that was kind of weird? Nice and perfect now. Boy, number three. Nice and good. And same with four. So I just used old head bolts, got a chain right here, got my tractor right there, and we are going to lift this bad boy up and put it on a stand. I also have a full rebuild kit. I used the same brand as I did last time on the 22R for Sticky. Um, DNJ is a, is a decent brand, I think. I don't know. I keep saying that in all my videos. They keep working, so I don't know. They're cheap. They're available. Napa sells them. I bought them online myself for multiple different manufacturers and motors. They make all sorts of stuff. So not sponsored by any means, but that's what I'm using. And I got brand new pistons. It was about $657, including the full rebuild kit, the new pistons, and all the um, labor at the, at the shop there. So brand new pistons. Just take my word for it, they all look the same. But you'll see on them that they say Oh, cool. They're DNJs. Look at that. Anyway, you'll see it on them that these happen to say DNJ, but they also have a 1.00 on them, which indicates that they are one millimeter past, uh, oversized rather. And I was asking the guy at the machine shop, and he was saying if it said like 0.25 or 0.50 or 0.75, that would indicate that they were like, you know, a, a quarter or half or three quarters of that much, but this is the equivalent of 40 over. So if it was 0.25, it would be 10 over. If it was 0.50, it'd be 20 over. 0.75 would be 30 over. And in this case, he couldn't find any pistons for 30 over, so he went from 20 to 40. So here we are. He also suggested that this is probably the, as I call it, the last hurrah for this motor. So if it ever needs to be bored out again, um, I might as well just get a different block. But it's good for now. And, you know, hopefully it'll last 300,000 miles kind of a deal. I think we're going to do a time-lapse variation. We'll see if that holds true throughout the video. But, uh, yeah, you guys have already seen this happen on my other video for the 22R. So this is the 20R. It's the same process. It's the same motor, essentially. So here we go.
Good morning guys, this is day two of Shihiro's engine rebuild. Yesterday I got uh, kind of rained out, not really, um, more like darkened out, it got dark on me. So we packaged up the motor for today. Here we are, we're gonna hit it, day two. This is what we're doing. Like I said, it started to rain and it got dark and it definitely rained overnight. So I'm really glad I put the tarp on the Forerunner. And even this morning it was downpouring, so very rainy. Glad that um, the engine came back from the shop with this bag and uh, that I was able to utilize it. Even though we are under a cover, it's like right here at the edge, so. This is where we are. We've painted the block. I primed it, painted it. I've cleaned the head surface and the block surface. I put a head gasket in there. It's that NGK, not NGK. That'd be cool if NGK made a head gasket. <sighs> it's the DNJ head gasket and uh, it's not bolted down yet. Obviously the rockers aren't even in there, the cam's not there or nothing. I just kind of put it on there as a placeholder just so it wouldn't rust and um, because I'd already cleaned the surfaces. So that's where we're at. We've got the rotating assembly in and we also have the rear main, uh, rear main seal housing and seal in as well. There's our 20 hour head. So right now we've got to do everything else. I'm gonna start with um, probably taking the head off because again it's not bolted down putting it over somewhere else and then doing the timing cover and the oil pump and all that kind of stuff in the front because that that's like the next hardest part one interesting thing is this this motor supposedly is from a, um, a Celica and I think that's true because well the lady had no reason to lie to me and also um, because it's an early style 20R um, in these 79s, they came with the dipstick over on this side, like the 22Rs and then REs and all in like most most R engines over here, at least from the later later 70s that I'm used to. But one of my trucks is a 76, actually two, I've got two 76s, and I believe at least one of them, because I double checked it yesterday, has the dipstick way over here. When I was inserting it, I put a bunch of RTV in there to seal it, and uh, when I was inserting it, I couldn't figure out where this bracket was going. I had forgotten already because it's been four weeks. I thought it went to one of these up here, but it wasn't working at all. Then I thought it went to that one. It wasn't working, so I referenced my other engine, and in doing so, I found where it goes. But I also realized that this is an early 20R, probably from a Celica. So there we go. For what that's worth, they came with different variations of the dipstick tube. All right, back to the time lapse. Well, bam!
All right, guys, day three of the engine build and what turned out to be the engine installation, okay? So last night, we ended up getting the motor dropped in. Uh, we have the, the four main bolts bolted together and a couple of the mount bolts. I gotta get the other ones back there too, but just placeholders just to make sure that it's all in place. I still have to put the carburetor on and to do that, I need to go through the carburetor and just make sure all the, all the ports are you know clean, just clean it. Um, it's gonna be a Weber 3236. I've got to either plug off this guy right here or decide to plug that guy off right there. And either way, I've got to plug them both off for now so that I can get it running if I decide to do that. And then I've got to figure out, um, you know, all the all the routing where, where everything kind of goes again because the 20Rs are a little bit different in that regard than the 22Rs. So i got to figure out the heater core deal and all that kind of stuff. Um, I have to fabricate some sort of thing. And by fabricate, I mean not fabricate at all. I think I'm just going to drop a battery in there and strap it in for now. And I'm just way too excited. So um, this thing rotted off, so I can't I can't use the factory like deal battery retainer thing, which is a shame because I like the system. It's nice and it's here and free and all that. I also can't use an aftermarket one because there's no hole right there as of right now. I could just drill a hole and grab onto it, but it's eventually going to you know rip up the sheet metal and stuff. So anyway, got to figure out the battery stuff put the radiator in, put all the accessories on, hook up the exhaust, but the motor's in. So I'm really excited. Really, really excited. We've got more stuff coming. We've got sweet LED lights that are gonna light up any spectrum of the rainbow um, at our command via our cell phones. There's like an app that you download for it um, with like halo lights and stuff. So LED lights with uh, infinite color rainbow deals coming soon. We're going to be changing this grill out because although it's cool, I've never seen anything like it. It's just not our style at all. It's just not what we want. It's just not happening. So we're going to change that out. We're probably going to do um, the same thing that we did to the turd, which is a four wheel drive grill with Alyssa really wants the original Toyota logo. So I have one of those. So we're probably just going to do that. I got to order that up tonight or steal off, steal it off the turd. I'm not sure. For those of you who don't know what the turd is, it's the identical truck. Um, we have another 1979 brown and white truck that is uh, kind of a basket case. and Well, it runs and drives right now, but it's kind of just has a bunch of different parts all over it. You can see those or that in my other videos. And yeah, we are, I painted the frame. There's a little dirt in here because when we dropped this motor in, we had the tractor and the tractor we also use for dirt work. So that's why I have this covered. But we've got a kind of repainted front end of the frame. I repainted the box. This is after pressure washing, and of course. Um, painted the mounts, kind of half-assed. Kind of just, you know, spruced it up, okay? So anyway, that's what's going on right now. We're super excited. Follow along. This thing's probably gonna be running and driving really soon. So, yay. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.